Hey YouTube, um, back again. I know I've been procrastinating on getting this project done. Um, I'm going to try to to wrap this thing up tonight here just because I don't really have anything else to do. Um, for those that aren't familiar with this build, go back through my videos and, and take a look. Uh, basically what I did is I, rather than buying um, a product from another company out there that adapts uh, air over hydraulic ram that Harbor Freight sells to these benders, I decided to build my own. And the reason being is uh, there's mounting issues. Um, watch back to my other videos. I'll describe everything. I don't want to go through it all again for those that have been following this. Basically what I'm doing now, this thing is done, okay? This works. <coughs> I haven't had a chance to, to use it just due to nothing more than finances and me having to use my money in other areas versus buying roll cage tubing that I don't necessarily really need at the moment. Um, you know, I could have my, my airlines and, and the filter and stuff set up better, and I will. But right now, right now what I'm focused on doing is, because I'm, I'm still trying to get things buttoned up here at my shop, um, and this is just a little bit of the unfinished clutter that needs to be finished up. Um, what I'm doing here is I'm taking some of these. These are garage door springs. Okay, let me let me show you on my garage door which springs I'm talking about. Those ones. And they obviously stretch way out. Okay, uh, you don't need the cables that come with those springs. Uh, I don't remember how much they are. I'll put a link in the description for them on, so you can buy them off of Amazon if you're looking for them. Um, but anyways, I have these wrenches and stuff just sitting in here just to kind of give me an eyeballed idea to give me some clearance off of the off this metal. Um, I've got my template set up for the bracket that I'm going to make here on the front. <coughs> And then I'll come back here and make this one on the back. Even though I have two garage door springs, I think I'll probably get away with just using one. I'll give it a try because the only thing the spring is there for is just to retract the ram. Um, you don't need it, but it, it just makes life easier. Um, the idea of having these rams on here is so to limit the workload that you're doing. Plus it lets you bend the, the quarter inch wall tubing with this particular bender. Without that, you're not bending it. You can't bend quarter inch wall manually with these benders. Even though they're rated for it, you can't do it. Um, you have to have an air over, air over hydraulic setup to do that. <clears throat> so anyway, um, I'm gonna, I'll show you the little template that I have for this first bracket. It essentially looks just like this, um, except for this gap is, is shorter. It's sitting over there, I marked it. Um, we'll go over there in a second. It's just going to hook in, hook in like that, and be welded right there, okay? Nothing special, I'm going to use um, 3 16 plate, should be plenty enough. There's not a whole hell of a lot of load on these springs to, that that plate's not going to be able to hold up to. Um, again, it's just to retract the ram so that I'm not having to push it back in there with my, you know, with my own force. Not that it's something that, that takes a lot of force to, to retract. It just, you know, it makes the job easier. So, here's the scrap plate that I have here. Um, hopefully I'll be able to get both brackets out of this. If not, I still have a, I have a little bit more here in my little scrap pile. Um, so that's what I'm getting ready to cut out. I'm going to cut that out with my Everlast Power Plasma 50 and clean up, clean it up so it doesn't have sharp edges and, and weld it on there with my Everlast um, Power iMeg 200. So, uh, all going to be one video, so I'll talk to you guys okay, in a Okay, YouTube. Um, got the piece cut out. See the cuts. I've got a bad tip on my plasma cutter, so, you know, the tip could be a little bit better. See if I can get this to focus in on it. Or the cut could be a little bit better. Um, I've been abusing this machine. It's been holding up. Um, I have my issues with Everlast, but the machine is not one of them. So, anyway, got to knock off the dross off the back of this thing and clean it, clean it up a little bit. You know, grind down the, the cut edge, cut edges, and then weld it on. 
So I'll see you guys in a second. <clears throat> okay, so got this front tab tacked on. Got the back tab tacked on. Um, I'm not going to, I'm going to try to to see how well this works before I go and fully weld this. The reason being is I might want to pull this back tab further out. I want to have a little bit of tension on this. And the reason being is I want this to be able to collapse itself all the way, even if the spring still maintains some tension. Right now it's got a little, but I don't know if it's enough. So, with that being said, I've got my airline hooked up. And <clears throat> we're going to start put an air to this and, and open it up. Now, for those that don't know, I don't have the proper air supply going to this jack. Um, should be enough to bend it anyways. It'll just take a little while. I need to get a proper shop compressor in here. Um, but this is pretty much what I wanted to see. To this point right here will, will let me know if I'm got enough spring tension on this. Uh, let me grab a pair of pliers real quick. There we go. <clears throat> so now I'm just going to release the pressure here and see if this will retract itself all the way. But it looks like it's got enough pressure to do a damn thing. Unless it's hooked on something. Which is a possibility. It is. Oh, I see what's going on. Hold on. User error. I have the actual bar for this, I just don't know where the hell I put it. I think it's user error. We'll find out here in a second. Um, yep, yeah, it is. You see that right there? I talked about this in my other videos as far as a review of this jack. The follower die, if you don't have a piece of tubing in there, drops down too low and it gets in the way. So, that being said, let me take this out enough to clear that follower die. Okay. I'm just going to hold this up like this with one hand. Um, actually, no. I just, there we go. I got it sitting on top of there. Now I'm going to loosen this up. I've got my my pin here lifted up. My anti-spring back pin. And with a little look here, this will spring back. And apparently my luck's not good enough. So I'm going to need a lot more tension on this to get it to to go back. Um, okay. Another reason for it to be tack welded. I'm not even sure if I pull it all the way to here will it be enough. What I might end up having to do and I didn't want to do this just because of, of I wanted this to look as good as possible. But what I might end up doing is just put this angle iron here at the end. That'll give it about two more inches, maybe three more inches. You know, I'll obviously have to cut it. Um, we'll see. Um, give me a second to think about what I'm going to do here, and I will talk to you guys in a minute. Okay, a so this is getting kind of sloppy, unfortunately. Um, here's what I got going on on this end. Welded a piece of angle. This allowed me to bring this bracket out another, I don't know, about two inches or so. Sorry about that, I'm fighting a cold. So, it's just tacked on there. Um, this is just tacked to the outside like, like that. So we got this it. <coughs> we got this all the way out to the, the first reset pin. 
So I'm going to lift this anti-spring back pin up and we're going to try to retract this again and see how far it goes. Last time I tried it, it did pretty good. It didn't get it all the way collapsed, but it got it to like right here. You know, something I could just push with my hand real easy. But, you know, obviously, ideally, I would like to have this thing go, you know, retract all the way. So here goes. I'm going to do one full turn. And it's retracting. And almost. Almost. You can see here where, how much more it needs to go. It needs to go about an inch. So, that's going to have to work, unfortunately. Um, I've got to think about it. I'm not going to do it tonight. But I may, you know, I may in fact put the other spring on the bottom. And just, just because I have a, a sneaky suspicion that that little little tiny bit of extra you know pressure on there might might retract it all the way I'm not sure like I said it it's really not that big of a deal it retracted that the vast majority of that pretty fast and if I just got to press on it just for that extra inch that's no big deal um, but that's what we're doing I'm just gonna finish welding all this stuff up and then I will see you guys in a second okay YouTube um, Final video or final part of this video. I uh, got this welded on. Could have did a little bit better job on the welds. A um, little bit of rushing. The big problem is, is that I forgot that this plate here, this outside plate, was not 3 16 plate. All of this was made with 3 16 except for this outside cap was made of 16 gauge and I made a mistake and burned through it. <coughs> there was that. And then I was running way too hot over here on this weld. And I ground it down to, to try to put a prettier weld on there. Then it ended up going crooked because I couldn't see the line. I don't know, it just turned into a mess. It's on there strong though, so there's two beads side by side there. Um, that's just kind of part of it. If this was for a customer, I would have definitely ground that back down and, and either just ground it smooth or I would have ground it down and, and put a nicer weld on there. There's that weld, that's pretty good. Um, but yeah, not bad. I mean, it's definitely going to do the trick. Obviously, some tack welds could hold that spring. That's going to. So, let me put you on the tripod. We'll try this one more time and wrap this video up. Okay. Let you see me attach this spring. Okay, springs attached. Um, we'll actually do this like um, like I was actually bending a piece of tubing. Okay, so what I mean by that is once this arm pulls out, I'm going to let the the anti-spring back pin hold it, and I'm going to repin this just like I would if if I was actually bending tubing. So. Um, let me make sure that that is tight here. Nope. Okay. Valve is closed. Give you a better view here real quick. Just because you don't need to see that back end. I'll just show that part.
Okay, so the anti spring back pin drops. I'm going to raise this. And then retract the arm. Let's see if with the, that pin out will it work. Pretty damn close. I don't want to grab that spot. So that's the effort I got to put into it to, to spring back. It's not that big of a deal. So, um, like I said, ideally that I would like the thing to completely collapse on itself with the spring, but it gets it close enough where all I have to do is pretty much just give it a little push like that, and it's in a, it's enough to reset the pin, so that's good. Um, yeah, I'm probably not going to put another. I'm not probably not going to put the bottom spring on here. I think it's good the way it is. To be honest, it works. <clears throat> if when I actually start bending some tubing in here, if if I feel like it needs it, then I will. But I I doubt it. Um, you know, maybe what I could also do is just spray a little bit of. PB blaster on the on the shaft once it's extended and hopefully that'll let it slide in and out of that seal a little bit better. Um, this thing's brand new, so I mean it's just been sitting here for I don't know what two months, three months now. So that's that. It's not the prettiest thing, you know, the spring attachments, but it is what it is. Um, it was kind of an afterthought and. It works, so that's all that matters. Um, subscribe, comment, like, uh, check out the link. The link's in the description. It's Alvarez Metal Works, my Facebook page. Um, check that out. Like the page, please. That would be awesome. Check out the pictures and crap I have on there. It's a good way to keep in communication with me if you're at all interested in just chit chat or whatever or seeing what the hell I'm working on. Um, what else? I'll put the link for, you know, the typical links for this project in there. I'll see if I can find these springs on Amazon and so that you guys can order them online. And that's pretty much it. Thanks for your support and, and watching these videos. And I will talk to you guys later.